Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Angel Bobs. As I'm sure you remember from the last episode, I've just finished off build, uh, building up this titanium facility and got as far as the uh, processed titanium. So we've got over this side, we've got the uh, various inputs coming in. We've got the um, the stereotype, the uh, rubite, and the and the catalyst. No, the what's it called? Um, combination catalyst. Um, blend catalyst whatever the catalyst blend is called anyway and from up here we've got the uh, sapphirite as well and those are all getting crushed and then um, floated and leached to get out the crystals on the other side so as you can see here we've got the three different types of crystals coming up and the catalyst as well we're feeding those into the sorting machines to get the titanium ore out the other side and then as um, obviously turning it into the uh, processed titanium We've then got these machines here which are taking in saline water and that's coming from these salination plants over here because we weren't getting through the purified water fast enough to, to be able to, for the byproduct of saline water to be enough to keep this, these machines running so I started putting, generating it separately. And so here we can then turn the processed titanium into titanium sponge and then we're smelting that down and turning it into plates as usual. That's then being fed up to this station where we're um, loading it up as, as, as with every other station in the factory and we've got about 21,000 here so that's going really rather well we're producing it quite a bit faster than we're using it so it's um, yeah building up nicely and the first bit of this that we created I turned into some um, thermal water pumps which are which are placed up here and these are pulling it out of the ground checking it into these um, into these tanks here for the trains to come up and grab and that's going pretty well I'd say uh, we've got well basically these, these tanks are basically full which is why these have almost stopped uh, the trains are coming up here regularly because I'm getting through this stuff at a hell of a rate. And that's being brought down here to this facility down here, the, where I'm making the catalyst, and unloaded into these tanks. From there it goes up into these um, these filters where we're turning it into the mineral sludge. And then the mineral sludge is getting turned into catalyst as before. And now at this point we're actually making this at almost a full yellow belt's rate. Um, full yellow belt's worth. And that's uh, being sent out to this station down here where it's being obviously loaded into these trains. So, the thing is though, I mean as you can see I've got, a, I think all of the, yeah all of these machines around here with the brown icons on them, they're the ones that are doing, turning the, um, the thermal water in, into the cat, into the mineral sludge. They've got, they've got a few as well that are turning the, um, the, the crystal dust into, into mineral sludge as well. But even with all of these, it's as you can see, it, it is just a, a yellow belt coming through and that's barely enough for the rate we're getting through it. And if, if I hover over here, as you can see we're down to th less than 4,000. Okay, part of that's because the trains come to fill up, but even so, it's we're getting through this as fast as it's being made. That's then being brought up here, and as you can see, this, this station's now, it has now run out, which is a bit of a problem, because it's, we're getting through it at a massive rate here, to um, keeping this, this iron production going. And then it's also being fed down here for the copper production. And then further on still for the tin and then also for the lead production and this is this means that the, the pro big problem with this is until fairly recently I, none of them were full so they're all running full absolute full pelt so the um, the iron factory here was taking out half a belt of it then the copper was taking out a quarter because each of these splitters divides it in two and that and then there's an eighth going into the, um, the tin that means there was only an eighth for the tin and for the lead um, yeah, because the other two use something else. So, so the, the, the lead production was far too slow. As you can see over here, there's there's th these these warehouses have only have got less than five thousand in each. So I really need to get the catalyst production faster, or alternatively, I need to get to the point where I I'm not using quite uh, the, the these these are all filled up. And as you can see, these have filled up, so that's that's okay. But the copper ones are still um, a sixth full. The tin ones are going. I don't know what tin state's going to be. Okay, tin is actually full because we don't use that quite in quite the same rate. Um, but lead, as it also as, you, as we saw earlier, is is very very low. So eventually, maybe we'll we'll get to the point where we don't need so much more catalyst. But at the moment, it's just getting it's getting eaten up faster than it's being produced. So I think I'm probably going to need to come down here and put in a double the number of these that I've got, and probably speed this belt up. Maybe stick in a second belt as well, just to get just to get a bit more a bit more throughput on the uh, on the mineral catalyst still it is working it's just not there just isn't quite enough of it so this is this is significantly better than it was before where I didn't where I, where nothing was working because there just wasn't any stone available to turn into the catalyst however the current problem as you can see you've got this um, 
all these iron ingots coming down here and being fed in over here. Why have these stopped? Okay, the problem has changed. When I last looked at this, the problem was that the iron wasn't coming in quickly enough. Now it seems I don't have enough oxygen to uh, to make it make the steel. Um, either way, the problem I'm having at the moment is that I'm getting through steel significantly faster than I'm producing it. So you can see here these machines, they're definitely not running flat out. Up here we've got, again, less than 10,000 between them. So I think I'm going to have to find some way of speeding this up. Now obviously the first way to do that is going to be to get a bit more oxygen coming in. And that's this facility here. I don't know why this has suddenly become a problem, but I, I clearly need just more more of these chemical fact uh, chemical plants producing producing the oxygen. Now the other thing that I've been doing recently is producing higher tiers of various different products. So now that I've got titanium coming in, I've got a station down here at the bottom of the bus. Where is it? Over here somewhere. Yeah, the purple stuff coming in here. That's feeding up to various places. But one of the big things it's doing is coming in here to this um, onto this this bus I've got going off to the side here. And we've got the three different tiers here. We're making sort of the basic tiers of machines, then the middle tier and the upper tier. And I think there is one more that takes tungsten and, and another type of circuits. And that's going to eventually, once I've researched that, I'm going to stick that in at the top here. But for now, we can build up the titanium um, cogs and pipes. And I'm also building some titanium chests. And I'll come back to that in a moment as, as to why I'm doing that. But this means that this, this for example, is, is where I produced the, um, the thermal water pumps here. And I've also got the various different tiers of, of all, all the other machines running. So here, for example, these are the um, the ore sorters, I think. So we've got the first tier being generated here, which runs off simple circuits and bricks and iron, probably. Um, yeah, and then the second one, which runs off steel gears, it needs the first generation, it takes some steel in, it takes more complicated circuits, and that makes the second generation of them. We can then use this, to, we can then feed them up to here, where we can take in the aluminium and brass, get brass gears, and uh, clay bricks and so on, and red circuits. And here we can make the third generation of them, Mark 3s. And that can then feed up to here, where we're taking in titanium and blue circuits and concrete bricks. And we can make the fourth generation. So at some point, I'm going to make an upgrade planner, one of these things. Uh, one of these things. As you can see, the, these allow you to tell the robots to upgrade from one thing to another. So we can upgrade from a Mark 1 to a Mark 2 air filter, or we can go from a Mark 1 to a Mark 2 chemical plant. So what I need to do is set up one of these that will go that will update all of the systems around my factory, and then I can just drag that planner across the entire thing, and the bots will flit out they'll, and they'll upgrade absolutely everything. That said, I think I should probably prioritise these ones down here um, because this, given the, the, the lack of oxygen I've got at the moment. In fact, let's do that right now. With this one, I can just drag it straight across there. And as you can see, it's telling me it's going to upgrade four chemical plants from a Mark Mark II to a Mark III. I think I might even have Mark IV chemical plants. Let's have a quick look. Where are chemical plants? They're in here somewhere. Ah, here we go. And the Mark III chemical plants is my current current top one. Maybe the Mark. Maybe I just, I just haven't done the Mark IVs yet. I'll, I'll 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 check that later. But that that if, when they deliver them down there, we'll find that the um, the air splitting then goes much more quickly. Where is it? Yeah, this one. So I'm going from a, if I'm going from a Mark II to a Mark III, it's going to take it from point almost point nine of a second to just over point seven of a second for each t each um unit of air it produces. So that'll help a bit, although it's still not really quite enough. Is there anything that's much faster? No, I mean the Mark IVs are a little bit faster, but there's no... Oh, Chemical chemical Plant IV. Interesting. I might have to look into those. Anyway, so that's another, another major thing I've been doing, working through here and building up all of the higher tiers of the various different um, products. And that's been going quite well. It's, it's, taken, it's been quite time consuming, to be honest, to build all of that up, because they're all slightly different and it's, so it's a case of going in and finding each different recipe and putting in all the mechanisms and things and, and pulling the and pulling the right resources in to build them uh, but yeah I'd say that's going pretty it's going pretty well the next thing I've done so over here you remember in the last episode or was it the episode no the episode before yeah episode before I was talking about how all these um, science production facilities I've built up and they're all um, well they're, t they're ticking over nicely the yellow one is, is, is absolutely fine so it's red uh, grey is 
Gray's good. We've got we've now got it now as I've started using thermal water instead of crushed stone for these. It's I was gonna say it's coming in fast enough, but that's just we just ran out of that, so maybe it's not quite so true. Um I was going to say we're still having some problems with the blue and the other ones because of the steel, but that seems to be okay. The blue is, is, is running, although not quite as quickly as I'd expect. And that's because of red circuits. I'm going to have to have a look into that. Oh dear. Over here, what have we got? Okay, so we've got a shortage of um, steel for the purple science. So that's um, that's coming back to the problems I was talking about earlier. Well, we need to have a look. At, I'm, I'm aware I need to look into that. And I think the same problem up here, um, although indirectly... Ooh, what's, what are we missing? Looks like we're not actually missing anything. Okay, so this one is running. And just... Yeah. Um, I don't seem to have enough brass chests coming through. That's something I'll have to have a look at. Maybe I need two of these machines. In fact, let's do that. In fact, let's make it four. Four's a good number, right? There we go. Nice little addition there, and that'll. I'm not sure why, how I managed to miscount, mis, misjudge, mis, um, misjudge that, because they should, they should all be producing at the same speed. So, uh, okay, no power fails. Though. Oh, two. Okay, that's why. Right. So this, this was the next thing I did. I, um, I built up these, these stations here to accept all the science packs. Then building. So as you can see, they've got four of them that are actually working at the moment and been producing enough quantity to get through to here. And then this massive area down here that's doing all of the um, the actual science processing. So I've gone from having maybe about 10 science uh, labs to this is just over 100 because I worked out that if we look at a, a, a random research topic, most of them seem to have a time per for each each unit of research of 30 seconds, uh, which means if I'm producing four a second, four science packs per second in each factory, and it takes 30 seconds for each one to get used, I need 120. Uh, science labs in order to get through them at the same rate I'm producing them. This isn't quite 120, it's slightly fewer because of the, way I, the, the number I put in the first column and copied it across. Uh, maybe I should have thought that through that slightly more carefully. However, look how fast this research goes now. Uh, let's take that one. Look at that! Research speed, that's amazing! I think I can basically do almost any research in about 30 seconds now, up to a 100. This is, this is absolutely brilliant. Uh, Compared to what I, compared to the amount of time it's taken before, it's it's absolutely fantastic. So I, I I spent a little bit of time just picking off some of the earlier researches. I'm I'm just going through doing basically doing them all in in sequence just to, to sort of get caught up a bit really because I've I've been neglecting the research quite a lot over the last few um, many many hours. Mostly I've been sort of doing research back the other way round. I've been going oh I want to do I want this specific thing how do I get that and then picking out the researches that I need to, in order to do that whereas now I'm just starting to go through and, and actually just do the one do the ones that are available but there's so much stuff available and there's all of all of these the, these yellow ones that are available for me to do now if I want them then there's all these red ones that aren't available now but because they because they have prereqs that I haven't got yet and then when we get about two-thirds of the way down we discover or maybe uh, we discover that there's the green ones the ones that I've already done but there's so much stuff left to do. I'm just gonna have to, I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to start researching a bit, a bit faster. Even some of this sort of, this sort of weird endgame stuff, like an Iron Man suit, apparently, which requires alien science packs, which I don't have yet, but I'm sure I can. That is probably just going to be um, those alien blob things I've, I've been collecting enormous quantities of, and not being sure what to do with. Um, but and then there's an orange, uh, gold, sorry, gold science pack, apparently. Uh, and there's a green one as well needed. Um, let's, let's have a look. I'm, I've got the purple ones and the pink ones. There's a green one there. And then there's some of the weird ones, um, like the, the biological ones, where I think you need to go out and harvest certain types of trees in order to get the um, something from those. And then there's all these module ones, which require module research uh, packs. Uh, and I'm not really sure what those are yet, but... Um, Module K. Yeah, so they take, they take something different. I don't actually know if I can feed those straight into the same labs because I discovered that there's various different types of labs. Um, that's not in, not in here though. If I look in, in here, let's look in the right place. Uh, so we've got lab, lab 2, alien, no, I don't know. Let's look at F and E. Oh, this is easier to read. Or I'm more used to it at least. So we've got the uh, lab two got alien labs, got normal labs, and we've got module labs. So presumably, I'm going to need these 
in order to in order to do the uh, module research, which is another thing to look into, and probably another science park to uh, to build at that point. Okay, so one of the one of the reasons I've moved all this over here is to keep it more organised. But as I've done that, I've removed, I've tidied up, tidied it up off the bus over here. So I don't know if you remember from the first series, but over here we used to have yellow science being built in here in this gap, and that's why we've got um, iron and copper being fed in here. Then we had the actual science labs themselves in along here, so you can see how few there must have been given they fitted in this gap. Then down here we were making the red science, and down here we we're making the grey. And right way down at the bottom, we're making the blue. So the idea is, I'm trying to move away from using this bus and just get everything shifted from here over to the new one because this one is is a bit of a mess. It's got all these kinks and bends in it from when from back in the days when I didn't have cliff explosives, so I had to work around work around cliffs like this. When I just when I didn't have enough space to be able to build outwards quite so much, so I was building on both sides of the bus. Actually, I've been doing that on the new one, but I've left a lot more space. And it was just getting very, very crowded. And so I, I've been feeding in lots of these new metal, lots of the metals in up here. But then getting, squeezing those in down here was getting harder and harder. And there's places like this where I had to somehow squeeze in a um, this cobalt steel in order to get the, the parts in for these inserters. And so it's just it got to the point where it was it wasn't practical anymore. So I, hence I moved away to to do it elsewhere. But everything else here can be pull, pulled up as well, pretty much. And there's, there's a few things left that I'm, I'm not making yet, like the inserters and the, and the belts that aren't being made on the other other bus. But most of this is now being made elsewhere, so I can probably rip a lot of it out without any worries. Um, this part actually isn't, the, uh, but then this is kind of separate. We've got this whole, all this washing facility here that's producing various types of mud and dirt and sand and stuff like that. And, and, and wood is being produced over here as well. But I kind of feel okay with that. Um, because it, it's kind of separate, even though it's built right next to it. Because there wasn't enough, though I didn't have enough space earlier. The other thing I've had to worry about recently has been a few biter incursions. So I think they might have um, evolved again and become a bit tougher. Uh, because I, ha I had some biters actually punch through the walls here. As you can see, all, that's why there's all this, all this damage and broken walls along along here, and generally stuff has generally been wrecked. Uh, and so I, I put in some more of more of the uh, plasma turrets along here in order to defend it. But you notice it's been there's been so I don't know whether it's so much or so little, but it's got to the point the, these um, turrets up here are still on yellow ammo. They've not they've not seen enough combat to pull through pull the uh, the red ammo through. It's only got as far as here, and then suddenly they were getting attacked by big enough biters that they just couldn't cope. So. And then they destroyed all of the inserters that were putting the ammunition in as well. So, so this area is a bit under defended, but hopefully with these um, pl new plasma turrets that I put in, it's now going to be okay. I think I probably need to roll up here with an artillery train again and just wipe them all out, and just safe the whole area. There was another place. Oh yeah, it was over here. I also got an. Was it here? No, it wasn't here. It was here. I also had an attack down here, as you can see again. Some more um, destroyed. Uh, plasma turrets and some, some I put in. I, th I thought they were going to get. Uh, no, that button. Yeah, they should get placed by um, bots, but they haven't yet. Maybe they're just being carried from a long, long way away. Anyway, so it's this. It's this corner here. Um, the problem I have here with these is that if I start using these turrets, they've got the they've got the massive. Um, They've got the, the range and the destructive power to do massive friendly fire damage. So as you can see, the um, the. the the area that this can shoot to covers the side wall as well. So if, if, if any biters get up close to that wall, then we're going to get massive friendly fire. Then these ones up here could take out this entire chunk of defensive stuff over here. So what I think I'm going to have to do with these is roll the artillery train up here, wipe out all of these biters in this middle area, and then just stick a wall and stick a straight wall in across there, and try not to have any concave corners anywhere else in the um, when I do when I do future expansion because it's it's not safe. The the, the the turrets just can't support each other, or the turrets will try and support each other and just destroy each other. So that is something I'm going to need to change. Okay, I think that pretty much covers everything I've done recently, um, at least since the last episode. So we've had the titanium um, here, we've got the, um, the bus up here building all my uh, construction machines, we've got the thermal water way up here. One of the things I do want to do is start building bigger tankers so let's see if i can find the yeah, bigger fluid wagons not armored oh, fluid wagon three 
Uh, what do I need to get that? Yeah, so I think Fluid Wagon 3, which means I need Fluid Handling. Okay, so I'm going to research these ones build, and then build up some bigger Fluid uh, fluid tank Tankers for transporting this stuff around. Now, oh yes, I remember. The reason, the other thing I was talking about, I said I'd come back to the reason I'm making these titanium chests here. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I do start using bigger trains, then a lot of my unloading stations aren't going to be able to cope with the, with the amount that they, the, each train will bring in. Because um, if I use if I use a train if if I use a, um, a wagons that are about three or four times the size, then I'm going to need three or four times as much storage space at the other end to, to hold everything. But I don't need to run as many trains. And I think the titanium chests are a good way of doing that. If I look up chests in here, you can see that the iron chests that I'm using generally I only have a storage size of 30 to 32. That's 32 stacks, so it's a bit more than just 32 of the individual thing. But it means I'm um, I mean, they're, they're a bit small, but if I upgrade to titanium chests, that's storage size of 80, so they're more than twice the size. I also want to try and get up to bigger, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, bigger logistics chests as well, but that requires a bit more research that I haven't been able to do yet. But these titanium chests, that's another thing that I can just sweep out across the entire base and do a massive upgrade with the bots. So those are my, those are my next plans. Uh, we shall see in the next episode how much of that I manage to get done and how much I get distracted by other things. One of the things I would also quite like to do is link this railway from here over to here and join onto these ones. So I've got a, a line going all the way around the outside the base because there's a lot of tangle over here and it's it's causing it's not so much causing issues but there's and there's a few places like this where there isn't a junction going the right the correct way. So I keep getting trains trying wanting to go down here that have to go all the way over here to turn around all the way over here to the depot in fact to turn around and then come back to go down here which is a bit of a waste of time to be honest so I need yeah I need to go around and, and patch up some of these these gaps um, and now that I've got got the hang of using the artillery properly it's becoming a bit easier to free up some free up extra space so I think yeah that's something I can um, I can do before the next episode as always if you if you think there's anything I've missed out or I've done done wrong or should do differently please do let me know I um, always like to hear from you guys and I hope you'll join me for the next episode, where I'll talk about whatever I can get up to, to um, whatever I've been getting up to since this one. Hope you join me then, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. And as a quick bonus, I thought I'd show you what happens when I start using all of these um, upgrade planners. So here you can see I've got upgrading all the chests, the tanks, and lots of other machines all across the factory. So let's grab that start up here in the very top corner drag it all the way across the factory as you can see it's showing me what it's going to upgrade from this um, this planner <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to upgrade in there wow okay this is going to keep my robots busy for a very long time okay let's go about out this far so you can see there we've got 1.6 thousand chests being upgraded hundreds of all kinds of other things um yeah so if i do this it's going to run everything for a while and it's going to run, run my bots keep them busy for a while you can see from that yeah you can see all of these symbols flashing on the um on the map so you can see all of the places that are being upgraded it's a load of, load of chests up there and i think oh and and here as well lots of machines in here to be upgraded I think it could be that the um, yeah the, the game just can't cope with how much stuff I've told it to upgrade, which is a shame because I've got this one as well, which is um, even more stuff. So let's do this one as well. Annoyingly, you, you have to be zoomed in to at least this level to sort of the can actually see things level of map mode, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. So pull that all the way across here again. This one's not quite as spectacular as the other one because there isn't the 1600 chests that it's going to have to try and do. But there's still, ooh, probably 500 things in there to upgrade. So let's leave that running as well. Okay, so as you can see, bots are streaming out, grabbing all of these systems from all of these places. <laughs> um, one of the things I'm going to have to do now, of course, is, is get hold of all of those. Um, machines that have been upgraded and then go along and put them in the appropriate places but uh, back in these machines to be upgraded into new ones it's a bit of a shame the bots don't do that automatically to be honest but still that's something to leave them running with there go all those titanium chests from the first one yeah i thought you might enjoy seeing that 
Thanks again.